All right, folks, we got the Viper Jet here, 1.1 meter with a 70 millimeter EDF. And we need to switch this EC5 off of here. I don't use EC5s, I don't like them for a variety of reasons. So we're gonna work on that now. What we're gonna be replacing it with is the uh, HXT four millimeters, which has got a four millimeter plug set. One male, one female, okay? So we're gonna do that. One of the tricks is you gotta slide the wire through here first, solder, and then pull that back. That's the trick. Um, so we built these two adapters here. Got a video that will be in the description below if you're curious to watch that. And uh, we're gonna do the same exact thing, except we're gonna build this onto the airplane now. So we have to kind of situate things in a way that will allow us to, to get this project done. One of the things you want to be careful about is uh, when you're soldering, you just get a little ventilation going on. And uh, what we're going to do is first chop off the EC5. I always try to save a little bit of length. So if I try to do an, an adapter or something, I, I've got a little bit of length. Um, but you don't want to lose so much that you can't um, get the job done if you need to. So this I will have to go with these. If you decided to just get the EC5 connector or an adapter, that would be fine too. I'm just not a big fan of using adapters except for where needed. And uh, so I'll deal with that in a little bit. But for now, without further ado, I just need to make sure I build this correct. So, the way this is going to plug in is going to be pretty simple, but I just need to make sure I do it right because it's easy to screw this up if you do it backward, okay? So, the way this is going to slip on here, the negative is going to be here and the positive is going to be here, okay? So, I've got that marked on the connector. I'm trying to decide if I want this above, below, or indifferent, or what. Okay, so we'll do it this way. So, plus and minus. Okay, so then that can just slip slip back and wait to be pulled out later. And then, of course, we need to uh, mate up the pins, of pins or sockets, whichever is appropriate for that particular spot. In this case, on the positive, we're going to be receiving a pin. So you don't need to take off hardly any of this wire sheath. Just a little bit. You notice this is too small, so I just go and I take one little bite, and then I rotate, and I take another bite, and then I rotate and take another bite. I don't try to score it around the edge like you would on some more solid core style connector uh, wires, rather, as you're stripping. Because with those really fine strands, you just have a heck of a time getting that to work. You see these little turds? I like keeping these, actually. They work good as uh, servo clips or servo clip retainers. Uh, I also have fuel hose, which is the more popular way of doing it. Okay, so once you're done soldering this, and you just pull it back into the hole. It sounds easy, except it's a lot harder than it actually looks uh, to execute that in a way that's going to be success. And it just happens to be big wire and all that, so... Um, see if I can get it over to this side. And that way I can possibly lay it here. And try to do my soldering. I just don't know if the bench is going to be long enough for that plane. Yep, I think we're okay. So I'm going to pause and get something to protect the plane. Okay, I was trying to avoid hangar ash and stuff, especially on a brand new plane, so we'll do that. And then the other thing is this is a foam plane, so obviously we're going to get these things nice and hot. So as we're working with this plane over here, we need to do something to try to protect uh, the temperature from getting down onto the, onto the foam. And so there's just a million ways to skin this cat. Um, but in my case, one thing I usually try to do is I'll find a piece of steel. Um, I just get this like leftover steel from work from projects at work this is off of a bracket that we didn't need for a project but it's going to be heavy enough that it'll potentially damage so I'm actually going to put a piece of foam uh, between this and and then the other foam pieces and that's going to help protect 
the plane from the protection device. I know this sounds ridiculous, but it's totally worth your extra couple of seconds of time. Um, these are out of a Hobby King product, actually. That ought to work nicely. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work good. And then, uh, if in doubt, you know, double it up or whatever you think you need to, to get the thing to perform the, the task at hand. But this is the sort of stuff that you're going to kick yourself if you drip a big drip of, of solder onto a brand new plane. I guarantee you're going to be pissed off. So just go through the extra effort here. Oh yeah, that'll work if I can get it to the right depth. And all I'm trying to do is just give myself a little something to hold up the steel right now. This is pretty heavy. Okay, yeah, now we've got a nice little work spot. We don't have to worry about damaging the plane if we have like one little drip. I mean, if you splatter like crazy, you might still have a problem. I'm going to clean this tip nice. Get that tip nice and shiny. Get some fresh flux on it. Then I'm going to come back over and just uh, get the solder up into these wires. It's touching that metal, but that's fine. Normally you wouldn't want to touch metal, but it's a painted surface. It's not going to transmit the heat very well. Let that solder. And as you can see, it's pretty smoky. Do a little bit on the other side too, on the negative side here. Remember, we need the pin on the positive and we need the socket on the negative. When you get that nice puddling, then that means you know you've got more than it needs to soak into the to the wire. So when you feel like you've got good enough purchase and it's got good wicking, then you can just tap it off of there. But just remember, you're on top of a foam surface, so you want to be careful how vigorously you tap that. So get that nice and hot. Make sure you rotate it once or twice. Get those fibers lined up the way you want. And then you can set your iron down for a second. You see the flux will harden. Okay, so then just double, triple, quadruple check. So positive is gonna go in here. While we've still got these like that, I'm just gonna double, triple, quadruple check one more time that this is the thicker one, which is gonna be received into that. And that's a pin. Once you get one right, you know the other's the opposite. So it should be pretty straightforward at that point. Just stick that into that hole to keep it out of the way. Okay, so that's not going to fit because I widened it up just a hair. So I'm just taking squishes down a little bit with a pair of pliers. Just to take those sharp edges off. And there you, there you have it. So now that's going to fit pretty good. And it's just, just in there with pressure now, so obviously we're going to go ahead and get some solder on it. You want to keep the solder out of that middle spot there. That's what actually makes purchase into the connector, the physical and mechanical connection. So I'm going to heat up this biggest spot here. I'm going to stick the solder in. Let the connector get nice and hot. And I can tell it's starting to melt. It's going to start taking solder here. Okay, so... We need to probably do a little something to hold this steady because it's wanting to walk on me while I'm doing this. It's going to be a little bit challenging though because normally I don't like these straight tips, but in this application I may, I may have to use the straight tip just because of how we're set up. And then I can clamp, clamp that on there with just your standard plasticky clamp like this something to hold that down, the forceps. 
Okay, now I can come back in and get the heat to it. It's very hard to do this if you can't control your work. Okay, that ought to be enough solder. Okay, so we're just going to let that set for a second. And this big piece of steel will act as a heat sink as well. So that's always a good thing. You don't want to go too crazy, overheat your work, you can damage it. See that? I don't like that. So I clean the tip again. I'm going to try to get some of that off of there. Actually, going to try to walk that solder up to this ring. That wire is extremely hot right now. I can't hardly hold on to it. See that it's wanting to bend there? That sucks. So we're going to heat this up again. Hold it steady, let it cool for a second. And that's hot. Okay, so now we're gonna let that cool for just a second. We can do the negative side now. Same story, just the other side. Same thing, we kinda got a, a little pokey spot there. So we're just gonna take it and squish that down a little bit. Once we squish it down, we can slip this on. Just physically push it in there, that's all. And you see, we can, we can get solder here, but we can't get solder in this ring. And we certainly can't get it there. So it's challenging to do this. This is not an easy connector to build, in my experience of connectors and easiness of connectors to build. This one has not been particularly easy. Okay, so now we're gonna clamp onto this with that little vent up. That's the vent I'm talking about. Clean the tip really good, preferably. Get in there and mechanically scrape it free. Okay, so now I'm gonna heat way out here. And see, I'm gonna take and point this at a tip like that. I'm going to try to walk it into the solder. See, you know, I, I even managed to get a little bit in there that time, too. It's very difficult. We're gonna let this cool as much as we can tolerate. It's very hot. What a beautiful plane this is. Okay, that should be soldered. So now I can, don't want that to fall. That would definitely damage your plane. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up in here and clean this with some Windex, which will also cool the product down a little bit that stuff out of the way for now. Okay, we'll start with the first one. Still got pretty good thickness there. I, I don't know for sure that that's going to work or not. See that thickness there is okay because that's going to be past the connector. 
or it's going to be sticking out in this area. It doesn't have to make it into a key. That part is probably not going to work. <sighs> Rather frustrating. Um, I have kind of an idea. Not sure if it's going to work. I'm going to just try the easy way first. It's probably not going to work, like I said. So the easy way I just tried there is I just took a little bit of material and just passed it around. But I didn't totally compromise the rest of the solder joint. Okay, so I'm going to get this out of the way for now. I'll just put that there. And then let's see if we can pull these on. We're going to start with the one in question, not the one that's not in question. Okay? Because if it doesn't go, you don't want to pull them both in there and have problems with both of them. Okay, so two theories. That feels like it went back in there. So now we'll go ahead and pull the other one back. You just kind of have to pull it really hard. Feels like, how can you not be ripping that off? But there it goes. Okay, guys, listen. Positive and negative. Yeah, baby. I want to hear the six beeps again. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, you get the idea. There you have it. We're going to be doing the build next. Thanks for watching. Come back for more. Check the links in the description if you want to buy the stuff I use. Or you can just go find it yourself at your local hobby shops and all that good stuff. But for now, thanks for watching. Come back for more. Really appreciate your audience.